that's the whole thing I talk about winning the battle in the morning. So every morning I wake up, I believe in winning the battle against yourself. People say, why do you say that? Because there's a lot of things you can't control. When you wake up, I talk about making your bed. Make your bed. Make sure your house is clean. Make sure you get your breakfast. Make sure you shower, shave. Whatever you're doing, control that. Don't hit the snooze button. All these things are very important. That's been told a lot of times. Why don't you hit the snooze button? Because you wake up already failing. You're already behind the power curve. So what happens when you hit the snooze button? You may not make your bed. You may not do your hair the way you want it. You may not pick the right clothes out in the morning time. And I go back to this real quick. Remember how you had a job interview for a job? We've had several of them in our lives. What did you do the night before that job, weeks before the job interview, when you knew you had it? You prepared your, you know, you had a bowl out for your oatmeal, your cereal, whatever you had in the morning time. Your coffee cup was out. Your clothes were laid out. You studied, you rehearsed, you were ready. You brought your best self. You're going to war with yourself because you wanted that interviewer to see your best self. You won. You got the job. After a few months in that job, you look around. Mm. I got the job. You start to back off. The clothes aren't out. You're not ready. You're hitting the snooze button. You don't get up on time anymore. You realize that you can still have this job and not be your best self. The interview you is gone. Your job is gone. You have your job, but the interview you is gone. So winning the battle in the morning time is just that. It's that you wake up in the morning time and you own all this stuff. Because once you leave your house, the world then gets at you. And that's why I believe in not, not, not getting up in the morning time and checking your phone immediately. Everybody does that. They get up, the first thing they do is grab their phone. Look at the phone. Maybe bad news on there. So how does your day start off? I don't go to the gym. I don't make my bed. I don't, you're caught up now on that phone. That's how your day starts. You lost control. So once you win that, once you win that battle in the morning time, then once you go out, now you've won. You go outside your house, you may lose your job. You may have a bad hit, but you won something. So, you, so you're going into battle having already won something. Having already won. So then if you hit the snooze button, you go out, you just defeated already. You're behind the power curve. Now you've won something. You feel better about yourself. So now you're able to take these hits along the way. So that's the mindset that I think it's important to bring with you every day you go. Everywhere you go in life. Win what you can. For me, my routine is every night I stretch out. And I stretch out for two or three hours every single night without fail. And while I'm stretching out, I'm thinking about my plan for the next day. And I'm thinking about all these different obstacles that may come up. So basically, a lot of us aren't prepared for life. We get up willy-nilly and just hope life is going to happen. It is going to happen. But it's going to happen with a prepared mind or an unprepared mind. Most people attack life with an unprepared mind. What I do is I try to account for all things that could happen, might happen, probably will happen, and then the unknowns. So basically, I can't account for everything. But I do know there could be some things that come up in life that you need to be ready for. I know for a fact I'm not going to want to work out tomorrow. Therefore, I'm preparing my mind for that. Mm. I don't want to do that. I know tomorrow will come with some difficult decisions to make. It may come with a getting a phone call saying someone died. This happened. That happened. I'm always preparing myself, not in a morbid way, but just like, look, man, be ready for life. Don't let life just start attacking you left and right. Make sure that you start to build a mental armor so then you're ready for life. And that comes with a very physical way, and the physical helps out the mental. Well, the thing about it, it's funny, man, all these uh, catchphrases, people always say, you know, failure is a part of life, and failure is how you grow. I've said all that stuff before, but it really is a bunch of shit. I'm so tired of hearing all these fucking cliche, fucking goal-setting, fucking posters and all that shit. Half the people who write that shit aren't even doing the shit they're talking about. Half the people talk about failure, you know, they're fucking millionaires sitting back at some nice house or whatever the fuck they're talking about. So it makes me fucking nuts. The reason why I believe I can talk on failure is because I'm still feeling the day and I'm feeling the major way and I'm, and I'm living when I'm talking. So many people who talk about all this shit, they're, they're has-beens. They're people who used to do it back in the day and I talk about it. Are you living it today? So for me, failure is something that you should be afraid of. It should be afraid of, but that's why you should go out there and challenge yourself to fail. 
Because if you're not failing at something, that means you've set your goals to pass, to succeed at everything you do, which means you're not setting your goals high enough. So for me, okay, I'm gonna go out and break the Guinness Book of Rules record for pull-ups. Lofty goal, which is why I failed it twice before I finally got it. I knew going into everything I've ever done in my life, Navy SEAL training, three times before I got it. Everything I've ever done in my life took me three times before I got it. I knew that there was a huge possibility of failure. But what I gained from failure is this. When you see a movie and you watch a movie about a person who keeps failing, and at the end, they succeed. How do you feel after you watch that movie? I was able to put myself there and say, God, man, how much do you feel now that you finally got there? That's what failure has done to me. I've watched so many things and watched someone succeed at the end of it. It's like, God, I want to feel like that. Mm. But failure causes that one feeling. Without that failure involved, you don't have that feeling. If you just pass and you succeed and you're great, that feeling, yeah, okay, I'm good. What takes you years, months, years to accomplish because you just can't get over the hump, but you continue going back to the drawing board. You're looking for those few seconds after you finally figure out the equation, whatever the equation may be to get you to finally pass, to succeed. I live for that feeling, but I can't get that feeling without going through, fuck, I feel this equation. I failed this one, I failed this one, I failed this one. Oh, I'm figuring it out. So you start to feel it before you even pass, before you even get to, to, to the success part. And then once you succeed, the feeling is unbelievable. And you take that feeling of success, through failure, and you put it in your cookie jar. And you say, I'll, I'll come back and get you again. I'm going to need you again down the road in my life to call on you. Like, for instance, I see men and women now are almost all the same. I see women carrying bags. I see women opening their own doors. Like this whole world is kind of mished into one big, one big person. Mm. All these customs and courtesies, all these things are just gone. Like, you know, the second the uh, that bell rings when the daggone airplane parks, everybody just up versus a man seeing a woman that he sent by say, hey ma'am, is this your bag? It's all these small things. It's all these small self-disciplines. We're always rushing. Oh, we're rushing. rushing everywhere. We're rushing. People aren't holding doors. Or it's all these small things, these small disciplines. Why do you make your bed in the morning time? When I was in the military, I never forgot. I was like, why the fuck are we folding our shirt up this way? Why? Why am I making these hospital corners 45 degrees and then folding my bed back six inches the size of a dollar? Why am I doing this? All these small things that we do in life are building your mind up for discipline and all those disciplines are gone so that's the one thing that we definitely miss is yeah. self-discipline but uh, it was it started off with the rocky and rambo movies you know those are kind of like my father's when i was coming up but then when i finally met this guy named scott garen this guy that fell off it you know he had a, a parachute accident a guy crashed through his parachute and he fell 13,000 feet pretty much to his death because his his parachute collapsed and he would, you know, he fell 120 miles an hour to the ground. I mean, that and picture in the book. Of, it's it's disgusting, yeah. right? And um, so he hit the ground. And I met him a couple years later at this uh, CAP Civil Air Patrol camp. And I'm sitting there, and and no kid was like amazed by him. You know, they're like, okay, this is a great story. I'm a kid. Let's go. I'm sitting. There, he comes out, and I was amazed by Rambo. Like at a young guy, like, oh my God, this is the real Rambo. He came out. He had, you know, he got his, his throat cut open to, you know, to open up his airway. And so, yeah. so I saw he got trached and I saw all these different things. I was like, my God, he came out talking all like Clint Eastwood and he shared the story. And it's all hardcore. And I started following this guy, but he didn't know I was following him. So for a week long, he did push ups and flutter kicks. And I was like, man, that is the real Rambo. I was looking for strength my entire life. I was, I didn't have any. I was a, I was a really weak kid. My dad beat the living shit out of me and took every, I was strong as a young kid, but me protecting my mom for so many years in that house, my dad made me very afraid because he beat the shit out of me every time I went at him. So in that, I want, every man wants courage. Every man wants strength. At least this one does. So I found it in every way possible. And when I see a strong guy, I was like, okay, maybe he could teach me. So he didn't know anything about me. 
So time went on. I left school, you know, I, and then this guy was in my mind. We had zero money, man. Like we, at, at one time, we lived in a $7 a month place, government subsidized apartments. Now we live in like a $200 place when I, at this time. I searched. I went on a $500 phone bill. And back then, dude, and having no money, my mom wanted to kill me. I was in search of Scott Garrett. Yeah, no Google, no No internet. Google, no nothing. Just I was just randomly calling up bases? Air Force bases, man. <laughs> calling up Air Force bases, man. Uh -huh. Hey, you know what Scott Garrett? What do you mean? I'm like, who's Scott Garrett? I'm like, he's a pararescue man. A, a what? Because, you know, a pararescue man, you know, there's not a lot of them. So I started getting, okay, there's a PJ base here, a, a pararescue base here. So I started tracking down pararescue bases. Finally, Key West, Florida. He's a scuba instructor down there in Key West, Florida. I, I'm, I, I, I leave a, like a message. He calls back gets a hold of my mom. I'm like, I cannot believe this guy called me back. My first question to him was, hey man, can I come stay with you for a week? He's like, who the fuck are you, man? He didn't know who the fuck I was. The guy let me come stay with him for a week. I think he said about four words to me in the entire week. We we PT together and I didn't need to hear a word from him. He you know he, you know he didn't talk a lot. He was an instructor. I would I would go to school or to uh, scuba school with him. He would instruct. I sit on the couch for 10 hours sit in the lounge on the fucking couch for 10 hours. He come back, pick me up, we go for a run, he go home, we ate fish every fucking day because we had to go out in the ocean, and hunt, you know, like, like I would go uh, lobster hunting. I hate the fucking water, I was scared to death, but this guy went in, so I'm going in. And I left there with just one big thing. That's what I want to be. If I was born with a silver spoon and everything was given to me and life came easy, but knowing where I came from and where I'm at now, just because I was able to crack open a few more doors, that's what's disappointing for me, for other people. You know, so it's not that I want to live there. I know I can go there. And once again, I know other people can go there. So I guess that's the thing with me is, that, is I know I have the ability now to go to a place that's very, very hyper-focused that I can accomplish some pretty amazing feats. Not because I'm amazing, because I allowed my mind to be open-minded for the possibilities of what can I achieve. Most of us fail in life because we're afraid of what everyone around you is thinking. That's 100% truth. So we live by the narrative of other people. When I first called a recruiter to be a Navy SEAL and I was 297 pounds, the first recruiter looked at me and said, you're not gonna be able to make this, man. So what he was doing was he was projecting his energy on me. He knew he couldn't be a fucking Navy SEAL. So God helped this black guy, because I was only the 36th African American to make it through in over 70 years. How's this black fat guy gonna make it through? In my ass, he wasn't even willing to try. So he's projecting it. So a lot of us who are negative people, all we do is project how we feel on other people. So what happens is that there's a lot of negative people walking around the planet Earth who are afraid to try. Because everybody, a lot of people are very negative in this world. So we are afraid to fail. Why? I told you, man. You shouldn't even try to, dude. Just chill out. Relax. Why are you so crazy? Why are you so obsessed? So all that stuff drives the, the uh, quitting mind, I call it. The mind wants to quit. The mind's tired. The mind's tired. The mind's deserving. The mind thinks it's very deserving. So yeah, the, the, the biggest problem in this world is other people. Not yourself. It's other people in your head. They are puppet mastering you pretty much on your life. Because I realized once I was talking to myself the right way and all this shit wasn't in my mind, wow. I went from this piece of shit kid who thought he was dumb, not successful, insecure, who stuttered when I first saw somebody to a person who can now do all these things just because I now control my own mind. When you get to the point where you really fucking don't care, you're dangerous. You become very, very dangerous. Mm. I'm not saying don't care like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you, mm. about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. You know, growing up, I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to be in the military. Because why? Some of my black friends, I was afraid of what they think. I was afraid of what other people thought about me. So now, when I go in the military, I know you want to fucking join the military. Yeah, I ain't tell you because I'm afraid of what you thought. Once again, man, you're allowing other people to shackle your mind. It's the, it's, the, it's the worst thing in the world. Do you think you could go the other way and maybe become a bit cold? 
if you don't care what anyone thinks? Your fiance, your kids, you know, is they're not the people around, do you not care what they think? See, that's the thing about it. You have to have an understanding of what not caring means. If your fiance and your kids don't believe in you, you can't care what they think. That means you chose the wrong support staff. There has to be, so that's why a lot of people don't understand one another. Your support staff has to be like, if I want to go out and do whatever it is, my support staff is, you know, my fiance. If she's like, you know what, you know, I don't think that you should be doing that. I have to take it, you know, why? So I can be open-minded. So, so, so why are you saying this? But if she's saying it because of her, you know, that's not, that's not the right thing. Because I need backing, you know, I'm going to do open-mindedness. I need support. So you got to be very clear thinking about all that stuff. My circle's very small. I make sure I didn't handpick these people. Because I'm like, so, so you don't want people in your corner that are like, oh, let me pat you on the back for whatever the fuck you do. I don't want people patting me on the fucking back because I fucking woke up in the morning. No. So you don't want that. You want people who are honest with you who are going to tell you what the fuck is honest. Honest and truthful people. So someone who's honest and truthful, who has lived and is accountable for their own personal life, that's who you want in your corner to say, hey, man, you know what? You're pretty fucking dumb for doing this, dude. Like, this is not smart. Or you're being a, you know, you're being a turd today. You're not getting after it. That's who you want in your corner. So you don't want a lot of people handpick people to be in their corner who kiss their fucking ass. You don't want that. So you're very selective of who I'm those selective. people are. I'm selective. Yeah, but you'll listen to those people. You? you have to. Yeah. You have to. So one of my big, one of my best qualities is I'm open-minded to the right people. Mm. But I don't respect a lot of people. Because how am I going to respect you if you're not fucking grinding every day? Mm. And I don't mean working out, getting to the gym. Really going out there and grinding. So if you don't know how I'm living my life, how am I going to respect you? So you have to be a hard worker, period, doc. You got to work your fucking ass off. That's where I get respect for you. So if you're working hard every day, now you have an opinion in my eyes. But if you're just a guy who talks shit and you live this fucking life of talking shit, come on, dude. I understand one thing. You're just talking shit. But if I see you every fucking day of your life trying to be better, every day going through all the wickets to be better, you got my attention. I respect you now. Mm. So respect is the first thing.